My first two questions call, uh, come from Cal and from Nikki, and both of them are asking about increases for seniors, both the CPP, old age security, and just for the government to do more for seniors. Um, so I'll begin with on the CPP side. Uh, the government cannot double or increase the CPP. It's a pension fund. So it's dependent on how much you put in is the money you get out. Uh, you get a certain percentage of the invested return. And in the case of the CPP, the CPP was only starting to invest its amounts when it was corporatized, when it became a true fund back in 1999. So it's been 21 years since then. Um, the government could do more, I think, for seniors in, in this situation, but a lot of the programs being rolled out by the government are, be, are designed specifically around ensuring uh, that we do income replacement. So for those workers who are immediately losing income, uh, that they get some type of replacement uh, for things they have lost immediately. It's not meant to help everybody who is having a difficult time making ends meet before the pandemic downturn, but all these programs are designed to help those who are having a currently difficult time because they've been ordered to shut down by their provincial government or by the federal government if they're a federally regulated uh, employer. That's what these programs are designed to do. It's a very unique and very, very specific uh, uh, ad way of addressing this viral pandemic and, and some of the unfortunate outcomes. Now, one area I think the government is failing and failing very seriously is helping those seniors which are approaching retirement and they have money put away in an RSP and they've seen their RSP and we've seen the stock market go down to basically 2008, 2009 levels um, in many situations. So 25 to 30% of the value of your savings being wiped out just a few short years before your retirement. And I think this is an area where the government needs to spend more time to figure out how to help these particular individuals. Um, I don't have an easy answer. I don't have an answer for the town hall right now because this is a, a very, very difficult issue to cover off. I had seniors tell me they're actually going to go back to work. So people who are getting ready for retirement just a few years away are getting ready to fully stay in the workforce or they've retired already pre-65 and actually going uh, planning to return to the workforce when the viral pandemic is over. And I, I think that's also a really important uh, area that the government needs to do more to help people. Um, their their uh, proposals on you know 25% uh, reduction on taxes for RIF uh, at age 71 uh, uh, amounts that you'll be taking out, that's not good enough. It's not gonna help enough people. More needs to be done so people can either use their RSPs their savings, what they own, and also for our seniors not to be completely wiped out when they're approaching retirement. Uh, there is no plan that I know of so far for the government to increase old age security. And I think a number we have to remember is thus far, with all the government announcement, all the changes that they have proposed to make, the parliamentary budget officer has costed out the deficit for this year to be $184.2 billion. I mean, there isn't a lot of fiscal space to work here beyond that in order to add more uh, support programs for more uh, cohorts, more groups in uh, the Canadian population without substantially increasing the deficit. And I, I think that's the number we need to be looking at right now. $184.2 billion is the largest deficit in Canadian history. The largest deficit I have ever seen a Canadian government or provincial government ever put forward. And it brings us much, much closer within the term of this parliament to a $1 trillion debt on the Canadian taxpayer. We know that every dollar that we borrow today to deal with the pandemic is a dollar we're going to have to pay back in higher taxes in the future, whether it will be paid by this generation or those that come after us. And so there's a certain amount of fiscal responsibility that we need to assure ourselves when we're addressing these issues. So uh, Nikki and Cal, I know those are not easy answers to accept, uh, but those are the answers I have for you on this town hall.